and God's plan was set in place. Jesus came. Jesus came to tell the world about his father God. Jesus came to enlighten us, to take us out of a dark spiritual place and take the scales from off our eyes so we could see where we were the world could see where we were where we are spiritually with or without god and the true meaning of christmas what our responsibility is, is to tell that story that today we are still in a dark world mm. today if we don't know jesus christ as lord and savior we are lost today if we don't accept jesus christ as lord and savior and celebrate who he is the savior of the world we are lost and god wants to redeem us back to himself so we need to tell the world that there is hope in this place there is hope where you are god wants to meet you and god wants to meet myself at our point of need he wants to reach out to us and bring us into a place of light amen amen and very well said and you know we have to pray for the world we have to pray seriously all of us christians and the ministers or churches all the churches uh we we need to seriously pray for our country for our fellow brothers and sisters because no matter what background we are what religion we are whether it's a muslim or, or hindu or whatever it is we are all God's creation and God is calling all of us Amen. back to him. But he came and he was born for all of us. That gift that he, he brought with him is for all of us. God has given his son not just for a selected few, but for the entire world, for each and every one of us, no matter what our background or religion is. Amen. Christ came for you to redeem you from the power of sin. And so, this is a message that we have to relate not only to the world, but especially to our children. Um, you know, the children, they get very caught up with the fact that they'll be getting gifts and they'll be getting presents and all that. And we, we have to be careful as parents, as, especially as Christian parents. We have to be careful mm. that we are not pushing them down that path where they're going to be confused later on as to what Christmas really means. Yes, we're going to celebrate the Christmas with food and with drink and, and uh, with gifts and so on. But in all of it, just as Pastor Donnie said, we have to make sure that Jesus gets his due attention. Amen. And it's not just the five minute praying over our meals. We have to sit down and tell the story of Christmas. Tell the story about Jesus and his birth. And we have to, you know, they are supposed to be able to share that with their friends at school as well. And it's just uh, the other day, even my son, he, he, he was sharing this in front of a, a bunch of ministers and, and pastors, this whole story of Christmas. And he's only six years old. <laughs> and it just goes to say, you know, you can't be too young to learn stuff like this. Amen. So even from that young tender age, we have to teach them let them know that this christmas that you know we are reminded that the incarnation or god becoming man you know this wonderful theological event it happened it happened for real it's not just some fairy tale it's not just some kind of story it is something that happened about two thousand years ago and it happened because we were living sin we are all born sinners and if it didn't happen we would all be doomed we would all die or we'll all be killed mm. probably this world wouldn't even be right now having it been for the savior that came for all of us Amen. and so it is a time it is a season where we give god special thanks uh for sending his son to earth for us so it is our responsibility as Christians as I said before to spread the word and to share the word to the world to our children to our neighbors in our workplace on the bus wherever and whoever we go to we have to share the word and of course 
we know that it is all about uh, doing something good. We when we buy gifts, it's all about doing good. But it is not just doing good for doing good sake. And Pastor, why do we do this good? Why would we go and buy gifts for people just because it's December or it's December twenty fifth or it's Christmas time? Why would we go to the land just for doing that? Just for doing its sake? <laughs> you know, Christmas has become a tradition and you know it's very easy for us to fall into this kind of perspective of running out and buying gifts and you know um someone's telling me today i've got bad credit i, I needed to go and get a credit card and i'm like well you don't need to get a credit card <laughs> you, you know to to, to 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 buy gifts and and and, and so forth and, and that but we as you've said before we give gifts it our gift giving should be pure we give because we're showing our love for that individual. But it has become like a competition. I bought this iPad last year and I've got to get the newest version this year. But you know what? I lost my job. And I haven't got the money coming in anymore and I haven't got any savings. So, okay, I can get some quick cash somewhere. So I'll go to the shop and get some something, a cash converter or I'll go and get a credit card and so on. But that shouldn't be. But it's so easy to fall into that trap. Mm -hmm. Our motive should be, as you've said, to give gift from a pure heart, just as God gave us Jesus from a pure heart, gave us his best. We want to give our best, but really we've overdone it. It's just been so unbalanced, our gift giving. And at the end of it, we've given the biggest and the best present. And at the end of it, we've got holes in our pockets. <laughs> we owe people money. People are emailing us and they're ringing us or they're coming to the door because people want their money. And we've given the best, supposedly. <laughs> <laughs> and that is just a, a fact of the season. We, it has become such a thing that at the end of the day, when the season is all come and gone, and just as you said, we find that we are broke. <laughs> Not only that, but most sadly so, is that a lot of people lose their lives mm. during this season. Mm. And you know, when that happens, the enemy, the devil, he just looks at us and he just laughs and he just smiles because that is exactly what he wants. Mm. And that is his big plan where, where he draw us away so far from the things of God, from the real and true meaning of Christmas. And join us into thinking that it's all about drinking up our rum mm. and having a good time and going out and celebrating and doing this and doing that. And when we go out and we get intoxicated, we go down, we don't know anything, we walk out, we stagger in the road, a car come and hit us down. Uh, we go, we go to catch a train, we stand too close to mm. the edge and we fall off and the train knock us off. Or we fall into the electrical uh, system and mm. we get electrocuted somehow. And we find that a lot of deaths happen without any proper reasoning. Uh, on call for deaths. Mm. Stuff that could easily be avoided if we were to just remain focused. And if we knew and stayed true to what Christmas is all about. Which is just to, to meditate which is just to remember what God did for us and celebrate that. We don't have to go out and get junk. It's not about getting junk because that is not of God. And, of course, it's all about giving, yes. Mm. As I said before, even the three wise men came with their gifts. Mm. So we do celebrate by giving. But as a remembrance Amen. of the fact that God gave his son to us. And his son came and gave his life eventually. Mm. So that we can have life. It's all about you know giving in love, as Pastor Donna quite rightly says. Everything we give in love, remembering that it was all birth from the love of God. Amen. So I want you to find some way to do good to someone for this Christmas not only just doing that but go to them and share what you know about Christmas what you have learned today 
about Christmas. Share it with your friends. Share it with your family. Tell somebody about Jesus because that is the meaning of Christmas. Mm -hmm. It's all about Jesus. Jesus has got to be the center of it all. Teach your children about what happened during this Christmas. Tell them about the story about Mary and Joseph, how the fact that they went and they couldn't find that place to, to give birth. They, you know, everywhere they went, they were turned down, mm. but some kind man realized that he had room in his, it, it was a stable, right? right? With the animals. And the birth of a Christ actually took place humbly. With a few animals in a manger where they're sure probably smelling of all the sheep and smelling of cattle and smelling of that. You know, he didn't, God didn't send him in some five star hotel. That's right. Or some luxurious place, you know, to come down and to just announce, oh, yes, I'm king, I'm, I'm, I'm the big boss, yeah. I come to do this and come to do that. You know, he came in a humble manner. The most humblest of manner we can <clears throat> think about. So tell that story to your children. It's a very humbling and it's a very sweet and it's a very loving story that all of us should know and share. The songs that we sing should celebrate Jesus. Of course, again, the enemy, he has his agents. <coughs> so he has his people making up Christmas songs mm -hmm. that has totally written off Christ, that has nothing to do with Jesus or God, that it has all to do with what we have grown accustomed to do which is just to go out and shop and and party and party and party and party but the songs that we should be using to celebrate christmas is should all be talking about our savior who the angel said should be called emmanuel god with us and even in our churches we should be preaching this message and sadly to say that some of our churches we are not preaching this message the message of the birth of the special child so i want to encourage you again that we should be preaching this special message in the church for this season because any means that we can any time that we get you know we we should be sharing this message it should be something like a disease that it will catch on you know, the more we talk about it, the more that it will, you know, be engraved in Amen. the minds and hearts of others. Amen. So we have to make sure that we talk about it as much as we can. Talk about it. Preach about it. Sing about it. Let the world know that Jesus Christ was born in this season. So we have to share this word. And unfortunately, we are coming to the end of our little Christmas chat and I hope that you have gotten something out of this and I just want to ask Pastor uh, Farrell if she has a final word but I before I do that I just want to encourage us encourage you that if you are not celebrating this Christmas the way that you should that through this program through what we have said today that you will have a change of heart that you will know it's not too late mm -hmm. to start doing what is right. To start celebrating the Christmas the way it should be celebrated. By celebrating Christ. Amen. And I want to give a few minutes to Pastor Donna. Just to give a, a few closing words to all of the listeners of the Watchman Radio Program. Pastor Donna. Because it is the Watchman Radio Program. I want to leave this word of knowledge a word of warning santa claus satan's claws satan's claws if you look at the word santa and you rearrange them it spells satan and some of you might be out there saying that's a bit far-fetched but let me just say that satan isn't far-fetched in propelling billions of people into hell so i want to encourage you parents especially Christians and otherwise to teach your children the story as Minister Curtis Roach has said the story of Jesus the story of the manger the story of God's love 
towards us. And be mindful that when you keep on about Santa Claus, you're actually lifting up Satan. We're not here to lift him up. We're here to expose him. And we're here to lift up the name of Jesus. So I just want to encourage you with those words. It is Jesus Christ who came into this world because of his love to you, his love for me. And I want to encourage you this Christmas season to accept him and him only as Lord and Savior. It will be the best gift that you will receive Christ into your lives. Thank you. The Watchman. 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 And I want to thank uh, Pastor Donna Farrell, a powerful woman of God, for joining us today to share the word that we shared with you today, which is the true meaning of Christmas. And the long and short of it is that Jesus, Jesus Christ is the true meaning of Christmas. If in, in spite of all the celebrating, in spite of everything that goes on during Christmas, Jesus Christ is a, is a center. He will always be the center. He will remain. Nothing can change it. Nothing that we do can change the fact that Jesus Christ is the reason for the season. So, I want to encourage again all of us especially those of us as Christians to to share this word to share the fact that Jesus is a reason for the season and I'll just keep repeating it as much as I can because I want you to get it I want you to get the fact that Jesus Christ is the reason for the season there's no other reason there's no other purpose for Christmas. Jesus is the ultimate reason. He's the ultimate purpose for Christmas. As we have discussed earlier, it's not about Santa Claus. It's not about just uh, giving and receiving gifts. It's not about eating. It's not about drinking. It's not all. It's not about any of that. Any of that. Those things. It is all about. Jesus now we celebrate this season with some of those things the buying of gifts we share gifts we would celebrate the time with our families but as we again discuss Jesus Christ has got to be in the center of it he has got to be discussed he has got to be in, a, in it all you know sometimes we might be sharing our gifts in our homes and we would put on our Santa Claus suits and you know even that little just we might think it's a, a simple and innocent thing but when your young ones see that you know we are actually teaching them that Santa Claus is the reason we are teaching them that it is true Santa Claus why we give gifts so we have to be so careful how we do these things in front of the children you know I for one you know I I, I, I did that before but somehow I'm convicted of that right now because it's as Pastor Donna says if you turn around if you read the word Santa if you rearrange those letters, you will actually read Satan. And, and I, I really don't think, I really don't believe that it's a coincidence. I don't believe it's a coincidence. So I would not encourage that practice. If you want to dress up as a, a shepherd boy or something, or, or a, one of the wise men, and share your gifts, I would encourage that. And in the process of doing that share the word share with your children talk to them why we give gifts tell them why we give gifts 
tell them why we are sharing gift why we are doing this and how we are doing this and you let them know that Jesus is the reason for it all so I want to end this program like I always end it because I believe there might be someone out there who might have been listening and somehow have been touched by something that has been said and uh, you want to give your life to Christ you want to turn your life over to Jesus Christ and receive his free gift that same gift that I promised earlier the free gift of salvation I want to extend it to you right now and all you have to do is to just receive it just ask for it and receive it I have a prayer that I'll pray with you a short and simple prayer and just by repeating the words and believing that what you have said that you will receive it as soon as you have done said it you will receive that free gift of salvation that gift that will enable you to receive eternal life after this life on earth is over eternal life in a place where we call heaven a place where there will be no more pains no more sorrows nothing to worry about no more worries where everything that we have will be all paid for in full all we need to go just to go and enjoy and worship the one who gave it all to us so I want to say that prayer with you right now if you're out there wherever you are it doesn't matter where you are what you're doing if you're around people you don't want them to hear you can say this prayer in your mind God hears you and he will honor you if you have a sincere heart he will hear you and he will answer your prayer so after me repeat these words the Lord Jesus I thank you for coming to earth to redeem me from my sins I acknowledge you as the Son of God and I also acknowledge the fact that you died for my sins that you shed your blood for my sins so with that I want to ask you Lord to save me from my sins with the blood that you have shed to wipe away my sins and cleanse me from all my unrighteousness redeem me today and write my name in the book of life I receive your free gift of salvation today in your name Jesus Christ Amen and as I said if you have said that prayer and you believe in your heart that you have received that free gift then you have it it might not be a visible gift that you have in your hand but it is the best gift of all that has been embedded within your heart your spirit man has been renewed has been wiped clean if it was dirty I can guarantee you now that it has been washed as white as snow even whiter than snow you are cleaned and you are ready to go to heaven so again we have come to the end of the program my time is slowly going away and I want to thank you for tuning in I want to thank you for the time that you have spent with us and I pray and hope that you would have learned something from the, the discussion that we have held today 
my guest who was uh, Pastor Donna Farrell. I am your host, Minister Curtis Roach from uh, Shiloh Revival Tamanaka. And uh, Pastor Farrell, she is from uh, El Shaddai International. Again, thank you for listening. And uh, if you are in London, you want to find a place to worship, you can find us at Parkville School on West Green Road in London. The postcode there is N153QR, and we worship there from 12 p.m. to 3 p.m. every Sunday. So that's from 12 p.m. to 3 p.m. every Sunday. Uh, if you're visiting London, you want to find a place to worship while you're here, you can find us there to worship. And I'm sure that you will be entirely blessed. If you'd like to contact me for any reason, you can find me on Facebook by searching for Minister Curtis Roach. That's C-U-R-T-I-S-R-O-A-C-H. Or you can leave me a message there or you can uh, even uh, f- uh, find the page for this program which is the the Watchman radio program uh, that's the page for this program you can search for that also you can leave me a message there and uh, I'll be happy to respond to whatever request that you may have <laughs>